Welcome to my presentation. My name is William Nadeau, and I am interested in game design, more specifically as a game tester. And today we are going to be looking at the two most statistically impactful players in the gaming world. I'm talking about Smurfs and Trolls. And as a little disclaimer, about the video this is not a complaining video this is just a fun statistical reading video that's all it's all about i'm not complaining we have all come across smurfs and trolls in our own way and we have our own experiences and stories but this is about statistics and doing something for fun so what are smurfs and trolls well First off, we do know what a troll is. Trolls have been around for many years. They are the players that love to show their dominance over the weaker players or somewhat average players. There is a thin line as to how far they'll go with competition before things in their perspective gets too hard and they no longer have their dominating status. But then we have the newcomers, the Smurfs. Smurfs are rather sneaky little players. Very clever though. They prefer to stay in the realm of the weaker type of players rather than try to advance and they have their way of trying to stay within the realm of keeping their status as being the dominating force of that particular area. So what sort of statistics are we going to be going based off of knowing the difference between these two players. Well, we're just going to be real basic with this and make it real easy, as easy as possible. So we're just going to go with the elimination count and how much damage is dealt between the two. Okay, And there are many, of course, games that we could be using. But based off of these two variables alone, I'm pretty sure you've already guessed the game that I have chosen, Apex Legends. Okay. I could have gone with Fortnite or Overwatch, but those get a little bit complex and we just want something straightforward and using the two most basic important variables uh, in the Battle Royale games, okay? So why don't we start with the newcomers, the Smurfs. Now the Smurfs have actually been coming around for the past two, possibly even five years. Uh, they've been coming around definitely especially within the battle royale game okay so what can we find between the smurfs like what are the attributes with the smurfs well smurfs again are rather sneaky they like to stay within the realm where they are always the dominating force with the lower class sort of players but they do get rather clumsy at times sometimes they get a little bit too high and sometimes they get a little bit too low you know there is such a thing so based on performance per match or within a match this is about what you will see a smurf do when they're trying to not get too high or they're kind of showing a little bit you see some flex here and there but averagely it's going to be rather a high performance game for a smurf when they're trying to stay within the lower skilled matchmaking system Okay, but what about the uh, old school trolls that we've grown to know and love throughout the years? Okay, now these players love to show their strength and dominance and how they know the game. Unfortunately, they don't tend to test their limitations. They do the same. They tend to stay in the lower realm of things but they try to be seen they want to be praised they want to be dominating you know okay so with the graph that we have displayed here it's really not as impressive as some people would think a troll would have as you can see they're more lenient on getting the kills we gotta the kills matter more than the damage in this case for Apex Legends, you gotta have the eliminations to show your dominance all the time. Okay, so it's very—it's a very interesting statistical turn compared to the 
Smurf. So why don't we take another set here? Why don't we take the average Joes, the players who like to play the game for fun or for the season pass like myself. And averagely, you're going to have a rather low performance with these players. And statistically, it will show. And as you can see with the averages and, as, and the representation of each X and Y, everything seems definitely lower. The damage is lower and the eliminations is lower. And these players tend to know the game and they've tutored themselves or they've trained themselves to have the skills that they have now. And on average, this is what they would perform per match or so. So what happens when we have all three of these kinds of players into one match? In some ways, you can't exactly tell the difference right off the bat between the Smurf and the Trolls because they perform so much alike in, some, in so many statistical ways. However, it is easy to find the difference as to what makes these two types of statistically impactful players so different from each other yet so much the same. So with these results that we have gathered with these charts, we have the newcomers, the Smurfs. And as much as they prefer to stay in the uh, lower matchmaking realm, they're not always going for the high elimination. That's the part where they have to hold back. They feel like if we get too high on the elimination, we won't be able to stay in this realm of matchmaking. However, we can still scare them a little bit. We can still show our power and damage as we see here. So now when we go over to the troll side, the trolls try to demonstrate their power and they try to demonstrate their knowledge of the game against the weaker force. So they are going to be more lenient and probably have higher expectations to have more eliminations compared to the Smurfs. So when we finally put these two together and really see the comparison, we have our newcomer Smurf, and with the standard deviation, that is a rather high performance numbers, and the mean is 17.5 on average. How I got the mean was taking the current game score of eliminations and a previous game score that they have most likely have gotten, and I came up with the mean 17.5. Which means averagely a smurf when they are in the lower regions of the matchmaking system. As much as they want to perform as high as they can, they try to stay under a certain average. But what if we go back to the old school trolls? What if we look at them? These are the type of players that they show their dominance up until a certain point within the matchmaking system. Now, their performance in the standard deviation will be lower because they are still trying to test their limitations and they're still trying to see how far they can take their dominance. And of course, if you are to compare their current match and their previous matches with eliminations, the mean is going to be rather higher than an average smurf. Even though it's not much of a difference, these tr trolls are rather manageable up to a certain point because they only play until the competition gets a little bit too hard and they feel like they have to start over whereas smurfs are a little bit sneakier with the matchmaking system and they start to underperform whether it's on purpose or not they would rather stay within the realm of weaker players so what can we actually do with these results so nowadays if you've recently played Apex Legends and you try to go for a report you may notice a certain category and specifically says no smurfs okay when you make a report to a player and you say and you might notice the category no smurfing this is a clear message that these players are no longer tolerated smurfing is a rather a throw that off balance statistically and they will throw the game off balance in its matchmaking system whereas trolls may do the same but they only go up to a certain point in the match make and then they actually stop and start over their accounts 
But as game designers, it is our job statistically to keep an eye on the statistics and charts and try to remove as many of the smurfs and try to monitor trolls as much as possible so that the game can continue to be fun and enjoyable for other players. Thank you for watching my video all the way through. I hope you enjoyed my statistics on the difference between these two statistical, statistically impactful players. I have gotten my references here. If you would like to look up where I got my images, I have the Facebook group. Not, I'm not complaining for the not complaining image. It was very helpful. I'd like to thank you for that. And then I have my trolls image from dreamworks and the smurfs image from the subpng.com where you can make your custom images and then in slide four we have the apex legends by forbes article and an article which was written by kurt eric kirk senior contributor and then we move on to the last few slides that i have which is the smurf image two by the same website sub png i highly recommend for your custom pictures and the trolls from universal studios fandom wiki and we have the reference for number 11 for the no more image socialworker.com which is an article written by daniel munn and the have fun image from the stockadobe.com image have fun windows splash by crazy nut thank you